Hello, welcome to yet another new series. I can't resist a new series, can I? So, for quite a while now, it's probably over the last year, I've been wrestling with um, like IT themed episodes and it's bounced around a little bit. And so I figured, let's try something new. So come to no surprise for those of you that have watched my channel for a long time now from stuff I've sort of said on and off is that I've been involved in IT for an awful long time. Uh, as a user of computers, um, if you count filling in data sheets at school to be sent off to be processed by mainframes, then it would be 1980. Let me think about that. Maybe 1979, actually. Quite possibly, yeah. And then, yeah, I was lucky enough to see the first, um, well, before they were called personal computers, but things like the Commodore PET, and then the Apple II, and then, of course, the IBM PC, and so on. And during that time, I went from being a mainly a user, although I was doing it, you know, primarily using it at school for programming. And then when I started work, most of it was for number crunching and then again, programming or training people. Um, a lot of the support staff that worked in the uh, where I work, which was basically a factory environment, but it manufactured diagnostic kits and so we had separate places within the, the firm that did different things and a lot of the stuff was very paper intensive so there were a number of typist secretaries and as we went from you know basically having stuff typed up on typewriter to using pcs i trained a couple of them in how to use word processors and then from there it went into back into sort of doing a lot more programming and then help desk type stuff and then back into programming again and then back into help desk. So now we get into the 2023s, the 2020s, where I'm, you know, effectively, what would you call it? Um, Retired from public life, I think, is the expression that I tend to do this, to tend to say. Um, so at the moment, I'm basically just working on a number of projects of my own pleasing, put it that way. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I'm going to probably decide in the next few years whether I have another career in me or whether I, you know, do want to fully uh, retire. So... And it's, you know, I'm fortunate to be in that position. Not everybody is. But um, one thing I really miss is problem solving. Like where where the problem isn't coming from me. It's coming from outside. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a series where I take viewer questions. And so I came up with this idea of calling the series the IT wildcard. I'll come on to why. You know, it's a lot, like a lot of terms, it has multiple usage. And it's going to be about answering viewers' tech questions. So the idea is you just pose a, a, um, a question in the comment section. So we'll start off with this video, for when this video goes out. If you've got a burning tech question, and one of three things will happen. Either I'll realise that it's totally beyond my capacity, in which case I'll say, you know, uh, not something I can really help you with. Uh, in other instances, it might require me to, to go away and do a bit of research and that will turn into an episode. Or yeah, I might know the answer already, in which case I might decide either to turn it into an episode because I think it's worthy of a full explanation or just answer in the comment section. A lot of the time, um, you know, this is also an exercise in both you know, my own flourishing and everybody else's. Sometimes when you're giving a person an answer to a question, I, I always liken it to, to rocks on a beach. 
Um, and you know, all the answers are underneath the stones, underneath the rocks. And sometimes it's a case of, yeah, you know, there are certain instances where you'll go and find that stone for the person and give it to them. Yeah, you know, there you go. There's your answer. In other instances, you might point to a general part of the beach where you know it is and say, "Oh, look over there." And so that yeah, you know, my answers might fall into two categories according to whether I think it's worth my, me doing one or the other. So that, that's what to sort of expect. At the end of the episode, what I'll also do is I'll just talk a little bit about what I'm currently working on that week as well. And I might go over, revisit other questions that have come up. Maybe someone's got a question of a question. That's roughly the form we're going to take. At the moment, I'm still working out working this out so like I've done with so many other musing type videos I just iron out the kinks as I go along just roll with it and I'll like I normally do I just bring up various things on the screen so of course I've got nothing to talk about in terms of answering viewers questions this week because this is the first video this is what the uh, thumbnail is going to look like so what I thought would be fun to do a couple of things is you know what do i think an it wildcard is um, well it is i think actually related in this instance to to something like an it maven um, to me an it wildcard isn't quite the same as a, a jack of all trades um, i always associate a jack of all trades type person as being quite superficial in their knowledge Whereas I always associate an IT wildcard as being someone who has a much deeper understanding of things. Um, and a lot of IT wildcards find themselves, like I have over the years, in a situation where, you know, they get in in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning. They could be doing some training for an hour with a group of individuals. And that could range from fairly high level training of quite complex systems right down to real sort of entry level stuff and all stations in between then they can, might have to dash out to set up a projection for somebody that doesn't know how to set projectors up or is having problems and then they might be off to solve a booting problem or they might be wiping a machine or they might be creating images for new machines or setting up a machine and they'll be pinging around all day like a ping pong ball um, bouncing back from one problem to another that may not even be in the same domain. And then, you know, they get into the afternoon and it might be some on-the-spot, hands-on training with a user that's got stuck at a particular point in Word or wants some help with formatting or wants some help with Excel spreadsheets. And then it could be back somewhere else um, dealing with an unruly really printer, an unruly mouse, or pulling a machine apart because someone spilled coffee in it, those sort of things. And of course you flip backwards and forwards between the everyday boring stuff and then occasionally you might get something that really pushes you. But a lot of it is just day-to-day -day repetition of things that are variations on what you know. And obviously that, often that constant repetition really establishes your depth of knowledge um, so just to, to clarify here when when the term it maven is used uh, they're considered to be a person who's an expert or a connoisseur of information technology an it wildcard can actually mean two different things it's one of those word terms a bit like hacker um, it can have negative and positive connotations so when you're applying it to an individual um, often is used to mean someone who has a broad range of skills, interests or experiences in IT. Conversely, it can mean someone who behaves in an unconventional and risky way in IT. I to go, tend to go with the former, but also this fact that it will, will more often than not have the depth of a maven in terms of their um, experiences, their interests, their skills. Also, the other nice thing about this is anybody that's done a lot of programming or any scripting or anything like that um, may or searches comes across the use of, of the wildcard symbol in any form of searching and believe me 
as a yeah, an IT person, you spend a lot of time doing searches, both wildcard and not. So yeah, that's just to explain my usage here, my terms of usage. I didn't want to use the term Maven because most people don't want to know what it is. And until about, I don't know, three or four years ago, I'd never heard the term IT wildcard outside of it being used within file searching, stuff like that. I hadn't realised it was being used for individuals. And I thought, hang on, that sounds suspiciously like me. So... That's you know the setup for the um, the episode, and also um, an, an invite for people to post tech questions in the comment section. So the other thing then this leads into is what have I been working on this week? Well, another thing you might know is I like to to dabble, prototype, mess around in programming languages, and particularly Python. And uh, I've been doing a lot of work recently on tweaking uh, programs that I use for music discovery. And there's a couple of programs. I'm not going to show you the pro I've shown them before. And at some point, maybe I'll get around to chatting about a bit about Python if a question comes up. And I might well post the code uh, in the description. But uh, there's two main amongst a number of different quick and dirty Python programs. There's two main programs I use for music discovery. One is this one that uses our last FM, uses the API, goes away. For a given artist, it were, it pulls down their top album in last FM. And then it goes through, and this one, this version of it, actually pulls down 50 artists that are considered based on the last FM algorithm, which I've talked about in other episodes, um, that are close to the um, the artist that you've put in. Now, there's some other stuff that goes on in the background. I have to clean up some of this because uh, last FM in the API doesn't like weird characters, so it sort of strips out and swaps out various stuff. That's why we've got something very weird here. Um, there's some working on on this particular character uh, it's it's an unusual d with a dash through it so i need to work out what's going on with that but at the moment i've got a piece of code that sort of just navigates around that um i can also obviously change the uh, the amount that's displayed here or gets printed out this just prints to a obviously a text file and this is a a value in terms of the closeness to the original artist based on last FM's metrics. So you can see I have quite a list there to go on. So why why shape of despair? Well, I'm on a bit of a jag with um, Finnish doom metal at the moment, and uh, one band that I'm just revisiting of, of shape of despair, who I think I discovered. Uh, ooh, when would that be? 2015, maybe. I'm not sure. And so I thought it'd be a, a good one to, to talk about in this episode because of what I'm going to show you in a moment. So this original, uh, what's interesting about this is when I wrote the code originally to produce this, it was uh, something I called the method, which was actually a manual thing based on looking up stuff on Last FM, getting a load of, uh, you know, by hand, uh, getting band names from there and then by hand looking up albums. Another, um, so, so since then, in the last couple of years, I finally got my head around how to get the yeah, Spotify API to work. And in a slightly different way, um, I've created some code which produces this text file. So within the... Um, the Spotify API, you can, there's a lookup which allows you to, allows it to return 20 artists that are similar to a, a given artist. Now for the Spotify one, you have to use the Spotify special code. These are what all these codes are here. It's just for the purpose of me, if I want to then look up another band, it's easy for me. I don't have to go to Spotify if it's within this particular area of 
uh, interest of reference. Now, what I've done is I've got it to return 20, and then for each of those 20, I've got it to return 20 based on the other band. So then it produces from the code a list of all of the bands that are mentioned at least once within here, including if the particular band has been mentioned again. So I just put in some asterisks and I'm using a set to basically create just one a copy of each so I don't get duplicate entries and then you'll notice that in addition it's going to pick up the fact that shape of despair is somewhere else in the tree as well so this is just alphabetical order all the bands and then I do this very quick and dirty Pareto analysis because I'm keeping also account of the amount of terms times a band occurs and then seeing out of everybody including where the original band might crop up as a result of being under another band, um, how many times that occurs, and then showing the, um, if you like, the top 20, from, you know, the 20, 80, 20 thing in Pareto uh, bands that, that come up. And so this is what I end up with, a list down here. So it's just a different way. This, If I use this, I've now got to find out my own album albums from this um yeah so just a diff but also an interesting way of looking at it. and some of these may have come up here so i i do a lot of this i sort of dabble around in python and get it to to just look at things in different ways well the other night i thought well surely i could do this in bing and then show everybody else how to do it and sure enough um, yeah this sort of stuff is seems doable in bing and a lot easier so I've done this this is my um, particular prompt so this episode is also going to include a prompt and that may become a feature of the, the close off of these episodes um, I generally won't do talk about something as long as I am now because most of the episode is going to be speaking about the uh, the questions that you have asked rather than what I'm working on this week but for this one needed to pad it out a bit. Um, so I've recently been listening to the band Shape of Despair. Can you create a table that lists 10 bands, and I'm only going to do 10, I'm not going to do 50 here, um, that create music in a similar style, and for each of the bands explain your choice, and also just an album by each band that will be considered to be their most popular. So similar sort of thing. I've not told it where to look for that information. I have a rough idea from running a few of these previously before I decided to integrate this into this episode um, where this information might be coming from. So, let's see. It's giving me a bit of, uh, oh, themes of misery, pain and loneliness. Right up my alley, eh? <laughs> oh, Ahab. Yep. Skepticism. Storm Crow Fleet. I suspect uh, we're going to find out uh, something in a moment. The other thing you'll notice is there's quite a number of Finnish bands that play um, Funeral Doom or Doom more generally. Yeah, Mournful Congregation. I figured this would come. Oh, yeah, of course. Figafon. I can never quite pronounce that right. Streams from the Heaven Funeral and Pantheist. So there we go. So yeah, it's, it's actually doing a pretty good job of this. Um, so it's rather made my code now quite redundant. Well, of course, well, I suppose I could say, no, I, I won't do. There's something you can try. You could do 50 bands and see if it just freaks out and says no. Obviously, you don't get the nice um, similarity um, rating that you do in Last FM. The other downside with Last FM, and I think I've said this before, is of course I don't know how how much people um, activate the scrobbling feature in any music programs anymore. So I don't know how reliable that data is. It seems that it does list fairly recent albums. 
I find the Spotify one slightly better, but again, at the moment, and I'm, it's something I'm working on, I haven't perfected the code so that it does the album look up as well. And that's a little, well, actually, it's a lot harder in Spotify than it is in Last FM. Last FM's fairly straightforward. Both, um, both uh, programs I've written, of course, the other thing you have to do is navigate uh, our old friend Jason. Um, and that can be quite a challenge. The reason why I'm not bringing up the code at this point, by the way, is because it has my API keys in it. Um, so if I did that in the future, I'd have to do a version of it where they're either saved on the hard drive and it pulls it in or, um, you know, they're just temporarily blocked out. So hopefully that was uh, an informative episode. I'm certainly looking forward to this new series and where it might take me if the wheels fall off of it or it um you know takes off and crashes into the bog uh to use a metaphor um, then yeah I'll, I'll know to wrap it up but i thought it'd be interesting to try so in the comments section just put any questions you might have about tech and we'll see where that takes us thanks once again for watching bye for now and i will catch you hopefully in a future episode.